Now, whether you don't have many friends, you're scared to ask them for your first videos, or you're not allowed to meet other people due to COVID, sometimes in your filmmaking career, you probably have to film yourself. In this video, we're going over how I shot my latest short film, Tool Wars, entirely by myself, being the cameraman, actor, and sometimes even the hero and bad person in one shot interacting with one another. So in case you haven't watched the short film already and you're interested, be sure to watch it first by clicking up here because this will contain spoilers. So first up, is there any special gear you need? Well, you can film yourself with just a camera and a tripod, but there certainly is gear that makes it a lot easier to film yourself. I shot on my Sony a7S II and on the Sony a7 III. With the Sony native lenses from my girlfriend, I normally prefer my Canon glass, but since I use it with an adapter, I can't use autofocus. And if you film yourself, autofocus can be very helpful. But sadly, you can't use it always. For example, when I entered the apartment in the beginning, I couldn't use the autofocus because then it would hunt me when I come in and that just wouldn't look great. So feel free to use autofocus when filming yourself, but you have to know when to turn it off and focus manually by using your hand or a light stand as a reference point where you have to set your focus. And I also used my small HD focus monitor on my camera to see and frame myself, which was pretty helpful. Also, I did not shoot this on my entire rig, which I normally used to shoot, but just my camera with the monitor attached to it and a microphone with this small bracket that comes with the small HD focus Sony edition bundle thing. And I also did not shoot on my Manfrotto fluid head video tripod, but on my Manfrotto photography tripod because I couldn't pan or tilt anyways because I was in front of the camera and I did not shoot. So I could not use the fluid head of my tripod, so I just used my photography ball head mount for my camera because it was way easier to adjust the camera on the ball head when filming myself. The thing that sells it the most that somebody else filmed me was actually the motion that I added in post. I've talked about this a lot on the channel, especially for visual effects shots, but of course also if you can't move the camera because you film yourself. So I don't just use the handheld effect on the shot, well, not always, but I animate the basic movement of the shot by zooming into like 120 or even sometimes 140%, shoot in 4K for this if possible, and then I just animate it from left to right, up and down, in and out, or some of these movements combined. Now this by itself looks not good, most of the times, especially because there's no easy ease in Final Cut. But then I put an adjustment layer with the handheld effect on top of everything and sometimes a little bit of, you name it, motion blur, but not always because it does not always work. And there you have it, it looks like someone else shot it. And as you can see, I just put a little bit of motion in every shot, sometimes not a big movement, but always just a little zoom in or a zoom out. And of course, don't make it random, it always has to serve the story. Like for example, when I take the drill gun, I have a little zoom in to let the audience also see what I see as I open the box, and also a zoom in when I entered the apartment in the beginning of the film to like get the audience engaged with myself or the character. Or even a zoom out which serves the forward movement as I step closer to the camera. Now of course if you film alone there are certain restrictions to what story you can tell. For example you're the cameraman, okay. And you're the actor, so you can't control the camera. But we can check that off because you can just put it on a tripod and add a motion in post. But you can't focus. Now we can use autofocus or again, you can just lock the focus in when you focus manually before you hit record. Now you want to do a certain action in front of the camera. Easy, you're the actor, you can just act it yourself. But actually you want to tell a story with more than one person. Damn, you'll have to use cloning in post. And I'm not going into too much detail here. If you want a full-on tutorial on how to clone yourself, just let me know and I'll do one for you. But now I'm just quickly going over a few techniques that I used to get you some inspiration. Of course, the first great tip if you want to play more than one character in your scene is change your clothes if you play the other person because then it will look more realistic and the audience will be tricked into that as something else if you're just wearing something else and not look like the exact same clone. Also, if you want to show your face, which would give it up that it's the same person, you could use something to cover the face. Like for example, if you have bad guys, you could just put on a face mask or wear a bandana or a hat or something like that. Something like I used in a video. Of course, for the hallway scene where the two characters, both played by me, don't overlap, you can just create a very rough mask to edit the two clips together. For me, it was a bit of a bad situation because I didn't just edit two of the same clips together. I actually even changed the exposure in both clips because for exposing the hallway scene right, everything in front of the door was too bright and the other way around. So I found a straight edge, which was of course the door, created a mask and feathered it a little bit. And then we have the bad character waiting for the good character in one scene. Then I quickly, well not quickly, but I created the muzzle flashes with some muzzle flash and smoke assets from Film Riot, not sponsored, but link in the description. Then I created some ambient inclusion with some masks and just some basic lumetri color adjustments and cutting them down to the parts where the muzzle flash was shown. Nothing special really. Then I duplicated the original clip, set the blending mode to add, lowered the opacity and also cut them to the fire parts to make the whole image a little bit brighter. And lastly, I animated the path with some spinning shells ejected out of the drill rifle for every time I'm firing a shot. With free stock clips from Action VFX, link down below and of course, of course, 
put motion blur on it. After this quick tutorial on muzzle flashes, let's go back to putting two actors, well, one person in one scene. So at the end of the hallway, the bad person had to knock the good person down. I didn't use a green screen and originally wanted to make it with manual masking, but decided on trying After Effects new Roto Brush 2. Is it still new? Well, it's. It's been out for a while. I wrote out both of us and put us on the background, adjusted the color a little bit because again, I changed the exposure for the two shots. And then I'm honest, the effect isn't the best, it really doesn't look that great, but I tried hiding a lot of the bad masking and color matching with an animated motion, the handheld shaking effect and motion blur in Final Cut. And since it's just a few frames anyways, you can barely notice it anyways, at least in my opinion. 80-20 rule, guys. And now let's just quickly talk about the strangling scene. Again, same thing. Me pretending to get strangled, me pretending to strangle, quick roto brush and manual masking, because even though the new roto brush 2 is great, it had some difficulties with masking out this blurry mess we have in the scene. And there we have it, one person strangling another person, filmed by a third person with a camera, when in reality it was just me, myself and I. I'm so lonely. And I tried to sell this effect even more by not just showing this VFX clip, but also another perspective where I actually strangled myself with my real, not masked hands. Like I was like this and the camera was above me. I hope I have a behind the scenes of this because this looks just insane. And really the perspective does a lot in this scene to sell that there are really two persons fighting each other. And those already were my tips on how to shoot a short film by yourself, how to film yourself in general. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and also consider subscribing for more amazing filmmaking tips, tricks, tutorials, everything like this. And now go out and shoot a short film by yourself without any friends. You can watch the final film right here and you can watch a peephole effect tutorial which is also from the short film right here and I will hopefully see you in the next video where I'm filming myself because I still don't have any friends. If you want to be my friend then show me by subscribing. Goodbye!